Welcome to Lake Nicomas Lutheran Church. Welcome to worship with Lake Nicomas Lutheran Church. May God keep you safe and sound and give you good cheer. Our online worship will continue for some time and we will miss each other and laughing together. But I do invite you to uh, offer, to volunteer, to be a part of our worship service by reading the lessons uh, and the prayers, uh, providing special music, or even just a short uh, script uh, video at the end for dismissal. If you would like to be a part of our worship this way, uh, please go to our church website and click on Let Us Hear From You. Um, your voice and your faces will give us all good courage. Please refer to the worship aid, your electronic bulletin in the comments section. Your worship responses are printed there. In Acts of the Apostles, our main reading today, Aquila and Priscilla were early educators and missionaries of the first century. And it was um, an, an Chapter 18 of Acts describes some of how the church organizing was taking place and, and clear from the start this was a team effort. Uh, notice all the names in this scripture as it's being read here. All strong movements are done as teams. There are no he uh, heroes or singular uh, driving personalities, but it's teams that accomplish and persevere. The Holy Spirit in our theology appears in relationships, appears uh, in teams acting together in the Spirit of Christ. So the theme this Sunday uh, is the church as teamwork. Let us begin worship in the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us declare our doubts and disbeliefs looking to the risen Christ to forgive and redeem. Mary and Mary and Salome prepared for death and grieve their Lord. We come also stuck in past sin, disrupted by pandemic, unable to imagine a different future, unsure of our God who cares. The stone rolled away and an angel in white said, do not be distressed. Jesus is risen. He is not dead. Jesus is still Lord. Open our eyes to see truth, open our hearts to see hope, open ourselves to see Jesus. They remembered his words, you remember too. He is not locked in rock but lives. Death is not the end, pandemic does not stop living. No sin or disaster is too great for God. Remember, here again, trust these words, your sin is forgiven and you belong to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us sing. The words are in the comments section, our worship uh, bulletin. Spirit, you promise to show up wherever two or three are gathered in your name. You promise to appear whenever we are together. You are present in relationships that nurture and make better. This congregation is such a relationship. Continue to inspire our work together so that we may be your team for mercy and grace. Amen. Hello friends, we're back again today to learn another story about the Bible. Simon's going to help me tell the story today. I want us to think about things that are better when we do them as a team. So I was thinking about things like football or basketball or soccer or baseball, all of those games that we play where we're a part of a team and that's what makes it really fun. I mean, think about trying to play football or baseball. Like I might have something I could throw. Today it's a cat toy that Simon likes to play with. So I could throw this anytime I want, but if I don't have a team member to throw it back to me, it's not very much fun. I have to keep running after my own ball when I'm throwing it. So baseball or football or basketball or volleyball or all of those things are so much better and really can only be played when we're a part of a team. 
And you know, when we're at a game, like a football game or a basketball game, when there's a crowd gathered around and when there are cheerleaders that are cheering on the players, it's even more fun to be a part of a team. The church is a little bit like that. Now, sometimes when we say the word church, we think that we're just talking about a building, but the building isn't what makes the church. It's the people who are a part of that community who gather and love and care for each other. That is what makes the church. So I can be at home by myself like I am right now, and I can read my Bible, and that's a really wonderful thing. But it's so much better when I'm a part of a whole team, a community of people. And when we're a part of a community of people, that is when the church comes alive. So even today, on a day like today, when we can't gather together in our building for worship, we are still the church together. We're in our homes right now and we're worshiping sometimes by ourselves, sometimes with our families. But did you know that right at this very moment, there are people all around the whole world who are also worshiping the same God. We're a part of a team, a church, a community, and together we are what makes the church bright, bright and vibrant and alive. And there are other things that we do that truly make us the church and that help us to cheer each other on and to be together in community and grow stronger. This worship service has a pastor and me and people who are singing and people reading scripture and people behind the camera who are filming it and all of us make a team that help put together worship. In this time, we're really a team because we step outside of our doors to be the church and help other people. Some of our friends at church are helping hand out food at the food shelf for people who are hungry. There are people who are doctors and nurses who are living out their faith in the world. They are part of a team of people that are loving and caring for and helping to heal others. When we gather on Zoom or Google Hangouts or when we talk on the phone or when we FaceTime each other, we're still a part of the church, the team of the church that encourages one another. I'm doing a Bible study with other people and we do it over our computer. We can't sit in the same room, but we can still read the Bible and talk to each other about it. And that's how we learn more and more about our good and gracious and awesome God. So I want you to remember this week that you, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, aren't one person alone in your faith. You are a part of a whole community of people, a team, and all together we make the church. And so in this time, we are going to keep meeting together over the computer and talking on the phone and waving at our neighbors and doing all of the things we can to love people in the world to be a part of this team that God has invited us to be a part of. Will you pray with me? Let's pray together. You can repeat after me. Loving God, thanks for making us a team. We are a team that is made up of followers of God. We are your community, sharing your story and your love with the whole world. Thanks for making us a part of the best team ever. And all God's children said, Amen. Have an awesome week. Yay, team. I love you. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his followers came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, 
Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Acts of the Apostles, the 18th chapter, beginning at the first verse. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth, and there he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Emperor Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together. By trade, they were tent makers. Every Sabbath, he would argue in the synagogue and would try to convince Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with proclaiming the word, testifying to the Jews that the Messiah was Jesus. When they opposed and reviled him in protest, he shook the dust from his clothes and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. After staying there for a considerable time, Paul said farewell to the believers and, and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. At Ken Crea, he had his hair cut, for he was under a vow. When they reached Ephesus, he left them there, but first he himself went into the synagogue and had a discussion with the Jews. When they asked him to stay longer, he declined, but on taking leave of them, he said, I will return to you if God wills. And then he set sail from Ephesus. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. And when he wished to cross over to Achaia, the believers encouraged him and, and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. On his arrival, he greatly helped those who through grace had become believers. For he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Messiah is Jesus. Here ends the reading. Before I begin, I find it humorous that the writer of Acts of the Apostles thought it important to mention that in verse 18, the Apostle Paul stopped for a haircut. These days, many wish barbershops were open. The usual Bible passages we read at Sunday worship are an Old Testament passage that is the background to the gospel, a psalm with a similar theme, a reading from one of the New Testament letters that is entirely unrelated to the theme, and a passage from one of the gospels. This is the common lectionary, a list of scripture passages for each Sunday and holiday that most mainline Christian churches follow. 
But with just these readings on Sunday, it might seem like the Old Testament is a confusing mishmash of stuff that has no bearing on today, and, and, the, and the psalm are nice poetry. And the epistle readings are some obscure letters to who knows who. And the gospel readings are anecdotes about Jesus. So today's reading from Acts of the Apostles reveals some interesting things about the first Christians. Interesting things about the Apostle Paul's missionary activity and, and about how the early church spread and blossomed so fast and about the methods to train leaders and teachers in the first century church. After Jesus was crucified from the, and rose from the dead, Jesus stayed with his disciples and other followers for 40 days. And then after ascending to heaven, the Holy Spirit of Jesus came at Pentecost to those first Christians. It was then that the Christians began to spread the good news about Jesus, first in Jerusalem, then throughout the country, and then throughout the world. Some of the first disciples stayed in Jerusalem, James was one of them and was the first to be martyred there. John traveled and ended up in what is now Western Turkey. Peter eventually ended up in Rome where he was martyred and he is reported to be buried in the, what's now the Vatican. Thomas brought Christianity as far east as, in, far, uh, east as India. Andrew preached Jesus in Eastern Europe in what is now the Ukraine. Matthew ended up in eastern Iran. Jude went to Edessa, a center of learning in eastern Syria, where, where the Christian church flourished, coexisting peacefully with Islam for many centuries. Now, the Apostle Paul was an evangelist and missionary, initiating and encouraging churches throughout the Mediterranean area. His letters are the majority of the New Testament apart from the Gospels. His work is told in the last half of the book, Acts of the Apostles. His influence is seen in, in how the first church exploded across the Roman Empire. And from all that, it would seem that Paul was an extraordinary leader, a convincing orator and a powerful organizer who nearly single-handedly started Christianity. And that would be a huge misconception. In this 18th chapter of Acts of the Apostles, Paul is again on one of his missionary journeys. He is proclaiming Jesus in the major cities of commerce where people from all over the world came to trade. What a better way to spread the gospel than to, con what better way to spread the gospel than to convert travelers who will bring the good news of Jesus back to their home countries. While he was in Corinth, a major cosmopolitan city of Greece, he met Aquila and Aquila's wife Priscilla, who were refugees from Rome. Paul stayed with Aquila and Priscilla for some time. Uh, they were tent makers, uh, tradesmen, and every Sabbath together they proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues. And then some of Paul's partners arrived, Silas and Timothy, and together they brought many people to faith over the course of a year and a half. After this, Paul then headed back to Syria, where he had had his start. And he brought with him Priscilla and Aquila as far as Ephesus in western Turkey. Now, the ordering of the names is significant here. Priscilla is named before her husband Aquila. This is out of the ordinary for that time and that culture. The writer of this history is emphasizing the influence of Priscilla. It seems that she is a strong teacher and leader who was allowed to instruct men. Quite unusual back then. There is a couple of other things to note as well. The Apostle Paul did not single-handedly start Christian churches across the known world. In this reading, we hear that there was a team of missionaries. Paul was a leader, but he surrounded himself with a team. 
the strongest leaders choose and nurture strong people to be on a team. Some in leadership roles make the fatal mistake of driving off good talent. Some in leadership roles who are insecure will feel threatened by strong people who might challenge them, and so will, will fire or force out those strong people. But a strong leader will encourage a strong team. A strong leader will foster a climate of, of challenge and debate and will know how to manage conflicting ideas and forceful personalities. Priscilla was a strong leader. She was a woman of intelligence, wisdom, ability, and people skills. She and Aquila were left in Ephesus as leaders of the Christian church. Now, another fellow Christian arrived in Ephesus, Apollos, who was also intelligent and eloquent. However, Apollos only knew half the story of Jesus. He was capable and faithful, but did not know all that he needed to know. Now, notice the interaction between the capable Apollos and the equally capable and knowledgeable Priscilla. Conflict and vying for control could easy eru easily erupt. Instead, the method of interaction between the equally capable and strong people was to privately improve the shortcomings of one of them. Priscilla, capable and insightful, took him aside, it says in verse 26. Talked with him, talked with him away from the others so as to help him save face. She explained the way of God to him more accurately, it reads. And by this, Apollos kept his reputation, was even more knowledgeable about Jesus, and had even greater standing and influence than before, as reported in verses 27 and 28. The early church took team effort. Christians learned from each other, worked with each other, supported each other. There are hundreds of modern uh, leadership studies that show that strong leaders are a part of a strong team. There are many studies that show the best information and the best outcomes are done by teams. And we can tell the ability of a leader by the quality of the people around them. Jesus began the church with 12 disciples. Now, we see them as uneducated fishermen, a morally a questionable tax collector, a, a doubter, a radical, a betrayer. But Jesus saw something else in them. Jesus saw passion and open-mindedness and tirelessness and dedication and focus. Jesus began the church as a team, that the church would always be a team effort, that it takes a team that, that has each other's back, gives all for the sake of the whole, has the interest of each other at heart. Jesus trained his team by sending them out to practice, two by two, no one on their own, always with another. Now, this worship experience that you are experiencing this, this morning, at this moment, is a team effort. You will see some of the names of the team in the, in the end credits, though others are part of making this happen as well. Lake Nokomis Lutheran Church is the result of many of you working together in the name of Jesus for the sake of God's grace in this world. And out of love for God and love for people working together as teams. Your church staff is a strong team. People of different skills, uh, different passions, uh, different ideas, all striving to do what is right and good for God's work in this church. And the call committee is, is a marvelous team of, of wise people who also pray for each other and encourage each other. God created humans to be in community, to need each other, to care for each other, 
to be strong together, to live and to love as teams. We are in this together. We are travelers in this life together. We laugh together. We share sorrow together. In times of fear, we hold the Christ light together in courage. Our world has gone into global quarantine. And yet in this time, there are signs of hope and love. Neighbors checking in on each other, picking up groceries, subscriptions for each other, acquaintances reuniting on Facebook, good humor, kidding, creative uh, online games, dedication to causes that feed and help and protect and, and educate and renew, an attitude of goodwill that has changed up from the la these last years of division. We, while we collectively endure the world's epidemic, there are signs of humanity at its best. There are signs of people looking out for each other, signs of, of community teamwork, of people working together for the good of all. Now that is God's Holy Spirit blowing among us. That is God's Spirit blessing. Amen. God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Lord, God of grace, Lake Nokomis Lutheran Church is a delight in your eyes. We are blessed by so many who share their passions and talents working together to make this church a blessing and a gift. Let the spirit among us flow into our homes and neighborhoods. Let your spirit of mutual sharing and service be the bedrock of our society and nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As weather warms and businesses open, continue to protect us from each other. 
help us recognize and respect the vulnerability of others by wearing masks and keeping a distance. Inform our leaders so as to make wise plans for easing quarantine. Help us all to endure as many of us catch the virus and fall ill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Spirit, God of mercy, protect those enduring illness, injury, addiction, depression, mental illness, estrangement, fragile relationships in this time of segregation and distance. Show us how we might encourage and comfort those afflicted. Remember those we name aloud or silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of Christ, you promise your love and mercy to all who are baptized. Your presence is with us always. Embolden the faith of those who mark their anniversaries of their baptism this week. Leo Hasselbauer, Sybil Hasselbauer, Emma Awe, Miles Corman, Ethan Lemoyne, Sophia Thoreau, and Fiona Carlion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless our partners in the work of your kingdom. The Minneapolis Area Synod of the ELCA, Living Table United Church of Christ, Spirit of St. Stephen's Catholic Community, Churches of the Kubi District of the Lutheran Church of Christ in Nigeria, Christians of other denominations and those of other faiths. Bless them and guide them by your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Generous God, Lake Nokomis Lutheran Church has been given a wonderful, capable call committee. Thank you for the committee leaders and volunteers, their dedication and wisdom as they discern the best future pastor for this church. Help us give them our support and confidence as they do your work on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We include in our prayer special requests from Andrea Holstead and Sasha Ilatsky. I am thankful for technology. I'm thankful that technology allows me to stay home and work from home and my daughter to finish school and for us to be able to attend our services from l l with technology and Zoom where I can keep in touch with my family and hear their voices and see their faces. It's a wonderful thing. Creator God, you constantly renew this world and bring new surprises. Thank you for technology that enables us to work from home, to continue learning in school, to worship with our church. Thank you for this gift that allows us to stay connected with family and friends. The virus plaguing our world is not of your making, but you do give us this way to endure protective isolation. Technology is a sign of your love for us. Lord, in your mercy. I'm thankful for quarantine buddies. <laughs> Minky. Tiger. Ethos. Maybe do a little Chester. And Ori. Creatures and pets delight you, maker of all, and you give them as companions to us. Bless Minky, Tiger, Ethos, Chester, Orion, and all quarantine buddies. Fill their day with the love that you also give to us. Lord, in your mercy. And now let us also pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Thank you for your consistent support of Lake Nicolmus Lutheran Church 
If you wish to give through Simply Giving, you can do so by going on to our website and clicking on the left side there, latenicomaslutheranchurch.org. And we always welcome your offerings sent by mail. God bless your generosity. Now let us sing. Now may God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Be blessed and be a blessing. I can't wait for this quarantine to end so I can get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs>